does our relationship with the natural world mean? And that, uh, you know, we have, we're taught to respect that natural world. And within that world, we're, we live amongst the others who are part of that. The others being the sturgeon and all of the other beings that live within that, within that natural world. Our relationship with the sturgeon is really important in that as the king of the fishes, as the head of that clan, all of the other fish are sort of fall behind that. And so our, we use those fish for, uh, you know, for sustenance. And the relationship that we have with them is important that we honor and respect that. So the sturgeon is, is a clan animal for Anishinaabe. It's, uh, it was an important food source and it was an incredibly abundant within, within the Great Lakes. As, uh, as George Anthony says in his book, The Elders Speak, he talks about the sturgeon being the, the king of all fishes and the fact that you respect those, those animals and, and if you're gonna take one of those animals, you need, to, you need to, you make an offering, you leave tobacco, you explain why you're doing it, you explain what it is that, that, that how that's going to help you or your family or your community, and you ask permission to do it. It's it's good to, to eat. It has a lot of oil, and you can render that oil, and we use that oil in a variety of ways. So we would take that oil and put it in a little hollowed-out stone uh, that was kept in the middle, and we the flame would. We'd, we'd get direct heat from the flame, but also would heat the stone and we'd get radiant heat. And that would be enough in a chilly summer night or in the, in the times in, in, in spring and, and fall when it was too warm out to have a big fire. That was one of the, one of the uses we had. Uh, the settlers who came found the sturgeon to be in the way. And they didn't like the fact that these big fish would mess up their nets. Um, there's stories of taking the sturgeon and stacking them on the shore like cordwood and burning them. They actually have, uh, in, I've heard of instances where they're so oily that they actually burn them in the, in the boilers on the, on the ships sometimes. Uh, so the sturgeon has survived all sorts of things and the fact that it survives today uh, is part of its, the tenacity of that sturgeon. Uh, it's millions of years old and a sturgeon by itself lives a lifespan comparable to human beings if not longer. And so we have um, Maxwell Field in Dishnikaz, Mimiwit, Minwa, Wapshka, Makwa, in Dishnikaz, and Nishinabemwen, Pataski in Dunjaba, Waganaksing, Odawa, and Dat, Mangin Dodeme. Hello, my name is Maxwell Field. Uh, my Nishinabemwen name is Pathfinder and White Bear. I am from Pataski. I am a LTBB tribal member, Waganaksing, Odawa. I am Wolf Clan. Uh, today is October 5th, 2015. We're on Burt Lake, concluding our uh, juvenile and slash adult sturgeon survey with gill nets, short term. Uh, we got two young ones here. Uh, in the grand total of our catch today, nine sturgeon. And then for our entire three week period, our boat has 26 total sturgeon. Interest in sturgeon, in lake sturgeon, in May, um, originally is kind of dictated through the 2007 Inland Consent Decree. 
uh, between the five tribes in the state of Michigan. Um, we learned of some surveys that occurred elsewhere in the waterway, such as Burt Lake. Um, and the last survey that was conducted there was 2011, and that was a, just a, a short-term gill net assessment. So we wanted to copy that style or that methodology, and we did that this year, 2015. The, idea, the main purpose of the survey was to um, try to get an idea, a better idea of the population dynamics and not only adults but the juveniles as well. So trying to target younger fish, um, short-term sets, typically two to three hours per set, lifted two to three times a day, depending on start and end times. Um, Little Travers was the main agency organizing it, us, Little Travers Natural Resource Department. We had Michigan DNR's Tribal Coordination Unit out there. Um, we had some folks from Bay Mills Indian Community, and also some, uh, some from Little River. So it was, a, it was a collaborative effort. There was also some folks from Sturgeon for Tomorrow and the uh, Burt Lake Association. The harvest was initiated back in 2010 by the, by the tribes. And currently there isn't any harvest in anywhere within the territory besides Black Lake and uh, not Seagull Lake. Um, and since the consent decree trigger for harvest is a 750, you know, as it's worded, we're, we're well above a, a safe harvest level. We haven't harvested every year. Uh, but we do have a, an interest among the tribe in it, not just for subsistence harvest, but also just uh, cultural significance and, and learning about just learning about sturgeon or nemea in general. Um, it's, it really is an ancient dinosaur fish. It's like a relic of the past, and it doesn't have fish scales. It's, uh, it's very different than the, a lot of the fish we see up here. And, and with that, it, you know, it makes it even more special. And, but recently, in the last few years, Little Travers has opened their own fish hatchery facility and we began producing sturgeon. And once we caught the fish, we get them on the boat into our live well, total length and fork length. A second measurement would be the girth or the, you know, the thickest part of the fish in, in the middle of the body. Next, we scan for the presence of a coated wire tag. That's basically just a piece of metal that's implanted in the fish at the hatchery, and it indicates that the fish is of stocked origin. After that, we'd scan for the presence of a pit tag, or a passive integrated transponder tag, PIT. And that's a little tiny microchip that they fit into the tip of a syringe, and you actually inject that between the third and fourth dorsal scoot on the fish and that can be scanned later at any time in the future with a, a digital wand and it gives you a unique um, seven to nine digit number usually that will that'll tell you when that fish was tagged and you know, hopefully the, the uh, biological data associated with it for growth. Next we would check for lamprey wounds on the fish um, some of you may be aware the, uh, the Inland Waterway does have a small landlocked population of sea lamprey in addition to native lamprey. We would also check for official marks from other surveys. As I mentioned before, there was a 2011 Burt Lake effort um, in addition to our 2015 assessment. So it, it is possible that there are old, uh, whether it's a pectoral fin ray clip or just a, a basic uh, genetics fin clip off the fish. We would check for any existing marks from previous assessments. And then lastly, we would take an aging, aging structure from the fish. You can dissect it later and determine age from that. There was a total of 63 unique sturgeon captured. Seven were, ca were originally marked in the 2011 survey. It appears that the, those 2011 captured fish grew about four inches on average between the four years in between surveys. So it's kind of the uh, initial results just based on the raw data and we hope to, to bust out the microscope and get, get into it a lot more this, this coming um, first quarter. We need to be thinking about in our lives how we respect life and how we do things that will cause life to regenerate or to keep moving and keep, and keep 
being there. They can no longer reach some of the spawning grounds because of dams. The sturgeon were endangered by the actions of us trying to manipulate, us being human beings, trying to manipulate the, the, the natural environment. And so we need to try to find ways to continue our respect as Native people, but also to help others understand why that's important in the world. And that, that we need to, we need to keep these, these creatures who have been with us for so long, in fact, longer often than we've been in some of these places. We need to, we need to respect that and learn from it.